Welcome to Finances and Make Financial Mistakes with Kathy Pfefferhahn. Finances and, in conjunction with my company, Capital Coaching, helps people achieve their financial goals through personal, tailored, and attentive financial coaching services. Together, we'll create a successful financial plan by examining your spending and saving habits and then guiding and educating you to your own personal success. But if you're more of a do-it-yourselfer, you can order my book, Finances and, your spending plan or workbook. It includes budgeting pages for each month, expense trackers, investment and asset tracking, debt management, setting your own financial goals, and more. To get your own copy, you can click the link in the show notes. I've gone over the book in episode 136, Your Spending Planner. You can also now catch these episodes on YouTube at Finances and with Kathy Pfefferhahn. The link is also in the show notes. Check it out. Today, I'm going to go over 10 financial mistakes that most people make. And these mistakes have a significant consequence on one's financial being. When individuals make poor financial decisions, such as overspending, not saving, or neglecting to invest, they often find themselves in precarious situations. Accumulating high interest debt, struggling to cover daily expenses, and being unprepared for emergencies are common outcomes of these mistakes. Furthermore, failing to plan for retirement can result in financial insecurity during one's later years. Impulse buying and lack of financial education can lead to a cycle of poor money management. Neglecting insurance needs can leave individuals vulnerable to unforeseen events. And avoiding professional financial advice can mean missed opportunities for optimizing investments. It is crucial to recognize these mistakes and take proactive steps to avoid them to ensure financial stability and your future financial goals. Now, on to the countdown. This countdown is going to be a bit sarcastic but it's going to end with a tip on how to avoid these 10 things. Number 10 is living paycheck to paycheck. This informal expression refers to the inability to pay for living expenses due to the loss of income or inability to budget. The reality is is it can happen at all income levels. The working poor is not limited to skilled jobs, but also those with advanced degrees, because it refers to having the experience that all of their paychecks go to their current expenses. The benefit of making this mistake is that it will force you to cut out unnecessary spending and use the power of budgeting, or you'll never leave this stressful cycle. Mistake number nine, using your home's equity like a bank. This means that you use the equity you've earned in the value of your home to take out a loan, using the home as collateral. Many people do this to improve their home because it actually makes the home that you're staying in or that you're borrowing against more valuable. By adding equity or value to the home, it increases your net worth, almost like a forced savings account. The financial mistake here is actually using the home's equity as a checking account and buying trivial stuff against the value of your home, meaning that you're not increasing your home's value. You just plain owe more money on it. Number eight, overspending on your home. Falling in love with a house is awesome but there is a real danger in choosing a place that's going to push you to be house poor. This is when you're not able to spend money on much more than your mortgage payment and you start to feel like you can never do anything. If you're not able to make mortgage payments, the company that lended you that money will take the house and sell it. And now you'll not only lose your home, but your credit score will be seriously damaged as well. The rule of thumb here is to not spend more on a home than 28% of your gross monthly income. That's the sum of all the income that you take home before taxes. The benefit, though, is that if you're spending too much on your home, it's going to teach you how to find free things to do because you're not going to be able to afford much else. Number seven, excessive and unnecessary spending. By hitting the add to cart online without thinking or throwing real items into your shopping cart or eating out when you can plan ahead and make your own meals, these are some common reasons for overspending. If you don't take the time to evaluate the purchase and how it fits into your monthly spending plan, you're hurting your financial future. You can buy anything you've budgeted for. It's the act of not planning for your expenses that hurts you. In fact, compulsive overspending actually rewards your brain with dopamine so that buying too much can provide relief from depression, anxiety, and boredom. But like any drug taken too often, that's going to hurt you in the end. On the plus side, Buying without thinking means that you're going to have the opportunity to practice all of your skills at returning these items. Number six, buying a new car. 
There's no doubt that there's a thrill in buying a new car. The smell, the clean interior, the more than 40%, which is almost half, of the lost value in the first year. That's right. That $30,000 car is going to be worth less than $20,000 within the year. You can count on the paint getting dinged, the mileage going up, and your insurance will cost more than the last car you owned. But the good news here is that you can take that same $30,000 and step up your car buying to a nicer model, avoiding almost all of the costs that you're going to lose if you buy a used vehicle. Number five, living on borrowed money. Prior to the pandemic, interest rates were fairly low and inflation was at a reasonable rate for many Americans. Now, with higher interest rates, we're financing our lives but paying much more to do it. This is really tied to excessive spending because it keeps us from putting money into funds that will earn us interest. Susie Orman says, if the interest rate on your credit card is at least 4% higher than the interest rate on your savings account, it makes more financial sense to use your savings to pay off or reduce your credit card bill. So if you owe 19% interest on a credit card, then any savings account earning less than 15% should go towards paying down credit card debt. However, if you do earn 15% on a savings account, please share that information in the comments below. The good news here, though, is that it's definitely going to teach you that paying debt first hurts and that maybe everything you're buying is not worth it. Number four, never-ending payments. Living on borrowed money leads to never-ending payments. If you only make minimum payments on revolving credit, like a credit card, your credit card minimum payment is the lowest amount that you can pay and still keep your account in good standing. But since you're paying interest only on these minimum payments, it means that after one year, you're going to have the same amount of debt as you did last year because you're never lowering your balance. And now if you buy more on that card, your balance is going to increase without a chance for it to go down. This means that you're going to be paying a lot more than $5 for that coffee over time. The real good news here, though, is that paying the minimum and keeping a balance actually does not hurt your credit score. Number three, not pursuing your own financial education. I'm not saying that you need to go back to college for this, but by avoiding anything in terms of financial education, you're affecting everything from your savings to your retirement. And this is how others can take advantage of what you don't know. Payday loans that charge stupid amounts of interest, the idea that bankruptcy is a way to start over, or that you just can't put anything into savings at all, are examples of ways that people lose the money they've earned when it could be working for them. Now, all of these options are available because they do have a place, but they're not meant to be the norm. If you increase your financial education, you can help avoid financial mistakes. And you can do this by listening to podcasts, reading books, and watching YouTube channels like mine. So just take it slow and educate yourself until you feel confident in your own financial journey. The real positive here is that you can learn slowly about topics you're interested in that have meaning to you now. Number two, not investing in your own retirement. Unless your family is already wealthy and is going to finance your retirement for you, you should be planning on financing yours. You need to ask yourself these questions according to Bankrate.com. How much can I save each year? Am I taking advantage of every savings opportunity like 401ks, 403bs, or IRAs? Where are my assets going to grow the best? Could I be saving more? How do I manage my assets? By avoiding planning for your retirement and foregoing any savings to be able to spend, you're going to find yourself working long past the retirement age. Not having enough money for living or health care should be terrifying enough to make you save something each month. But the good news here is that if you don't plan for retirement, you're going to have co-workers well into your golden years. And the number one financial mistake that you should make is not making a financial plan. I've long suggested that we don't use the word budget in our financial vernacular it's got such a negative connotation and one that's hard to shake. Instead, I would suggest using the term spending planner. Now, it means the same thing, but making a plan to spend sounds a whole lot more enticing than a budget feels limiting. A spending plan allows you to track your money and see how the choices you've made impact your savings and long-term plans. While doing nothing to plan means you're going to be surprised, probably in an unpleasant way, 
at what you're going to be able to live off of at age 67. So here are the big takeaways. Pay yourself and put money into your savings. Plan for your needs based on what you need to spend your money on. And put aside money for fun, but that's going to take some time. These three things are fairly oversimplistic, but it's a great start. The good news is that you can find a spending planner workbook right here in the show notes below, and it will make this journey much easier. This is Kathy Pfefferhahn. Thanks for listening to Finances and Make Financial Mistakes. I know you choose to listen, and I'm grateful. If you enjoyed this episode, please follow or subscribe for free in your podcast provider and share your favorite episode with a friend. I'd love you to leave a review because it brings financial education to others and helps people find me more easily. Or you can check me out on YouTube as well. Also, let me know what questions you'd like answered or any topic you'd like covered by going to the website at financesand.net and leaving a message. You can also contact Capital Coaching for your own personal financial needs at capitalcoaching.net. Remember, I went to school, so you don't have to. Finances and does not provide tax or legal advice, and nothing in this podcast is to be construed as such.